This week's topic is soil. Don't call it dirt. Soil is not a specific substance, but rather an environment. Soil is a mixture of sediments, organic matter, uh, air spaces, and water. Soil forms as organic matter piles up on top while layers of rock underground are being weathered. Uh, in summary, soil forms from increased biological activity and increased weathering. All right, we're going to be digging a hole today to look at the different layers of soil and find out what's underground. So right now I'm making a new fence for our sheep and uh, it all starts off this upper layer is really just a bunch of um, organic material. This is all plants and then if you look under here is a lot of roots and this is the top of what we call the O horizon. It's O for organic because it's mostly organic materials and roots and things like that, some worms in there, a little grub um, in that spot. Um, now this is still the O horizon and you're gonna see in a moment we're gonna change into the A horizon. Alright, you can see here compared to this dirt, starting to get closer to a color change but we're not quite there yet. The A horizon. Down in the dirt. There it is. What? Okay, look right here. Right here. In my. It has changed color. It's got a brownish color. And we've just changed from one horizon into the next. Okay, so we have here side by side. Here's dirt from two different horizons. Right about there. All right. That should do it. Okay, so this is the hole that I dug for this post. Here, we'll start here at the top in the O horizon. So we're going to go down through the O horizon into the A horizon. And you can see uh, there's not nearly as many roots poking out. And then it switches color as you go deeper down into the hole. It's changing color. all the way down into the bottom. Over time, as we saw in the video, soil can separate into layered horizons. The uh, O horizon is made up of organic material. The A horizon is a mix of organic material and also some uh, weathered rock sediment. The B horizon is highly weathered rocks and you're starting to get much less organic material at this depth. The sea horizon is partially weathered rocks and almost no organic material, and the R horizon is the bedrock. Soil's most important characteristic is porosity, which is the percentage of open space in the material. You can calculate porosity as the open space divided by the total volume. There are several factors that affect porosity. Um, a highly porous uh, substance would have rounded sediments that are loosely packed and are sorted. A substance with low porosity would have angular shaped sediments that are closely packed and are unsorted materials such as those from a glacier. Permeability is a soil's ability to allow water to pass through it. Infiltration is the rate at which water can pass through soil. Porosity, permeability, and infiltration are all direct, directly related. So uh, a substance like sand, which has um, high porosity, would have rapid infiltration and high permeability. Uh, on the right side, you can see clay has low porosity, and it's going to have uh, very low infiltration, low permeability. The only exception to this is when the ground gets very wet. Um, as the water uh, fills up the pore spaces in the ground, it, we say that it becomes saturated, and then the infiltration goes down even if the soil is otherwise uh, high in porosity. Capillarity is based off of the fact that water has an attractive force. You can think of water as being sticky to itself and to other things. This attractiveness of water can cause it to flow in any direction, including up against the force of gravity. 
So basically what's happening here is at the bottom we have water and as water is attracted to the soil particles it moves its way up through column of soil here in the same way that if you were to take a paper towel and stick it into some water, water would move its way up through the paper towel. Capillarity and porosity are indirectly related. So the less pore space, the more capillary action. And you can see this illustrated in this diagram. Um, a wider tube will have less capillary action than a more narrow tube.